And then we also got to see the return of Julie Ertz in the second half of this match. And uh, we got to talk about it. Um, look, Julie Ertz hasn't played in two years. And uh, there were moments in this, uh, the 20 minutes where she was on the pitch where it looked like she hasn't played in <laughs> two years. And yet, exiting this game with an early header attempt on a set piece, a yellow card, and is an asset uh, to winning the penalty kick for mm -hmm. the go-ahead goal in this game as well. It's uh, it was quite the 20 minutes. And, and we predicted that. In our preview of this USA versus Ireland first friendly, we talked about how we would see Julie Ertz, but 60, 75 minutes, and that's exactly what we saw around just before the 70th minute mark is when she subs on for Andy Sullivan uh, with a few other substitutes, as you mentioned, but definitely an opportunity for Vlachomaninovsky to see her get significant minutes, right? 20 minutes in a game is is – is better than 10. It's better than five. It actually allows her a chance to kind of rotate in. And as soon as she steps on the pitch, where the throw in was for the U S and, and kind of how it works, she's the first one to touch the ball. So she checks on and initially she's got a touch. Um, and, and her first couple of passes, right. were were long balls that were continuously getting intercepted. You could tell the game plan was, Hey, Ertz, like look to see if you can get it in behind to, to your front runners up top. Can you find Lindsay Horan? Can you, can you get the ball to them and play quickly into them? Because that's what she was doing. Uh, and instead of just playing the simple pass back to Germa or Sauer Brun or, or connecting with Lavelle in that front line. So that was clearly the game plan, which maybe threw her off a little bit because as a player, when you step onto the pitch after, uh, two years of not playing, seven months after giving birth, you need to build up your confidence a little. You have to connect passes, even if they're simple passes. You have to win a tackle, and you kind of get your mojo going. It didn't happen for Ertz initially when she stepped onto the pitch, right? I mean, she I, I mean this in the best way. She looked rusty because she hadn't played in two years. Yeah. And yeah. and that's it's perfectly fine and perfectly normal. She still looked better than um, – a lot of other players that we see playing con consistently. So to me, it was not at all surprising. I think it would have been way more surprising if Ertz came onto the field and, and looked the same way she did in the uh, bronze medal match for the Olympics in Tokyo. That would have been uh, scary. It's, it's like, okay, she is actually a machine, uh, but no, she's human. She, she, gave birth she had a baby seven months ago okay. it's going to take her some time to get back into things but there were still so many positives we saw from Ertz because although her initial like four or five passes into the game were intercepted um that's how she, the same type of sequence where she receives the ball deep and then she plays a long ball and, and finding a forward or a midfielder connects that's how the penalty kick is drawn for the United States to get their second goal in this game. She it's Ertz who plays the ball into Haran. It's such a great ball played in Haran can control it with her chest just inside the box. And she gets tugged down by Diane Caldwell. And, and that's the ball from Ertz. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sandra giving a, a hug in, in this one, because yeah. that's exactly how it went. Um, I mean, I feel bad for Caldwell. I'm not going to lie, but I, I respect the center back energy. In where you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like there was no way I was tugging the collar and had my fingers all the way inside of the collar. It was pretty, it was, it was a exactly. pretty fun moment. Um, yes. Obviously the friendly didn't have like VAR or anything like that, but for those of us watching on, on a broadcast who saw like replays and things like that, we're like, Oh yeah, that's absolutely, absolutely. That's a, okay. that's a horse collar. If I let ever me, saw let me ask you this, let me ask you this. Did, when, when the foul happened and it's like the horse collar foul in the box, PK given, did, did you think Haran was going to step up and, and take this PK? Cause we didn't see her line up over the ball initially. I think it was Lavelle at first. Yes. Um, I did think it was going to be Haran because that's kind of who takes these for yeah. us, right? Maybe Smith. I wouldn't have been surprised if Sophia Smith lined up over it. Uh, but Alex Morgan had been rotated out at this point, right? So that was my initial thought, right? Okay, so Morgan, no, she's she's not in. Hatch had just subbed in for her. So, yes, it made sense for me to see Haran get this one. But it, it got tipped. It wasn't like a surefire goal. It got saved a little bit by the goalie and then still went in. Got a hand on it. Yeah, but there was like enough power behind it where yeah. it's like it didn't matter that you got some fingertips on it because it was still in the back end of the net but it was it's definitely something to to maybe pay attention to who knows if in game two yeah. there will be a similar scenario 
um, where a PK, a PK is, is, is given and, and someone has to step up and take it. I'm, I'm curious if maybe if there's what your typical starters are in the game, like who actually takes, um, who takes mm-hmm. that penalty. But I think important to note that at that point, Morgan had been subbed out. So yeah. it's going to be over that, but I was curious. I want, I did want to get your, your perspective and your thoughts on that. Um, because uh, yeah, it, it did, it did hit the keeper. The keeper guessed correctly. I know. Um, and and it was she got a hand on it for sure, but just enough power. Um, with, with Earth coming in right, getting the yellow card, I think a dominant yellow card from Earth's fine. I like it. I I like that kind of yellow card. She goes in for the slide tackle, doesn't get the ball at all. The the other player was fined, right? Not not too malicious on that end, but it was almost like Earth's uh, kind of getting her footing back into this game. Um, I, I think as it, the 20 minutes went on of Earth's play that we saw, she grew into it a little bit more. She, she, it was almost like the nerves calmed down, right? Imagine like the heartbeat and the nerves of, of that type of player. But even post game and, and the players uh, over the last several days coming out and saying like, she didn't miss a beat. She did not miss a beat coming in and playing. And that's what you want to hear from, the teammates of Earth stepping in and, and taking this one. Um, what about you from Earth? Was there anything else you wanted to see from her or was it just like a little jittery, a, a little rusty from her when you evaluated it? Um, you know, I just, I just wanted to see, I just wanted to see her get a run out and just sort of, I wanted to see this player look like, um, she was just riding a bike again. Like I just wanted to see the, I wanted to see the muscle memory come into play for this player. And I think that's what I was looking for because I knew we weren't going to see like this breakout beast mode kind of player just because of how she has had to navigate her last two years. I mean, just seven months out from, you know, giving birth to to her son um, and how challenging maybe that could be for, for mothers making their way back into form. So I wasn't looking for like, you know, if she's not running a 40 yard (laughs) in like five seconds like it's a wrap like that's not the energy I had in this at all I really wanted to see the muscle memory yes from Julie Ertz and I was looking for that because I really believe that that is why she's back with this team unfortunately this team is rolled out with a very specific set of tactics (laughs) and has been committed to this for quite some time um, we know, and I think the oppositions know at this point, when you're going up against the United States, you're going to see them in some variation of a four, three, three, maybe at times a four, two, three, one, but that has been like very rare in which we've seen that. Um, and I think that's, that delivered for me because what mm-hmm. we saw when Ertz came in for these 20 minutes, we saw a player where it clicked immediately, came in, slotted into that defensive six position and knew when and where and how she was supposed to affect the game. Right. And I think she the fact that um, Lavelle wasn't rotated out initially and, and Haran never subbed out, um, I think that also helped a little bit, giving that familiarity to have two other players in there that in Haran and Lavelle that have solidified their position there to kind of yeah. keep the boat steady for Ertz, um, frankly. And, and right. And having Sauerbrunn and Germa in behind her, like it was like, let's not create too many ruffles and waves initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we do see Ashley Sanchez get rotated in for Lavelle uh, around the 80 minute mark. Um, nothing too crazy coming from yeah. that. Um, I think I know we're kind of closing out on this game and recapping it. Um, I want to give a shout out to Sophia Smith because oh, in yeah. the first 30 minutes of this game, I mean, right. Of course she's on fire. She's crushing it for club, uh, but we haven't seen her for country yet this year. And it had really been the Mal Swanson show. And we knew that Smith was going to come in and do good things. But in the first 30 minutes when the United States had trouble building up the ball and, and finding their forwards feet, Smith is one that looked for the ball dropping back into those deep midfield spaces just to get touches on it, just to collect it at her feet. I was, I was really impressed with Smith and, and her off ball movement to try to get the ball and try to win it back, knowing that Alex Morgan was going to continue to stay high and, and look to get in on, on the backside. But Smith was a very big bright spot in this game for me. Smith, Germa, Fox, standouts, and, and Lavelle. I mean, Lavelle is always a standout. She's always I a mean, playmaker. I'm, she's yeah. always the QB for this team. So she's always great. 
no, I'm I'm in agreement with you 100. percent You're gonna find little a variation or, or different for me. All standout players. I think even if you're looking from half one to half two, um, the ones who really really kind of had an impact uh, in a game like this.